Hello everyone, Ivan here, fresh from Staycation and back with you with the weekly update for the week of March 31st, 2019. This week has brought us builds 67, 68, and 69, which bring the first community unlock goal item, the Shunter Remote, as well as the Utility Belt, Item Dumpster, and customizable key bindings, along with other smaller features and bug fixes. Available for purchase in the in-game shops, the Shunter Remote allows players to remotely control the Shunter, giving you a lot more freedom in how you control your locomotives around the yard. From being able to ride from the rear of the train to ensure you've passed the switch, to moving freight while grabbing a cup of joe, the Shunter Remote will prove very useful around many yards in the valley. The Shunter Remote controls throttle, brake, reverser, and most of the other controls in the cab, as well as having indications for nearly every system you'd need. The remote is battery operated and has a solar panel to help keep it charged for use. It does have a limited range though, so you can't be too far from the paired locomotive, or you could lose signal and control. Included with every Shunter Remote purchase is your very own manual booklet, so you can learn the ins and outs of the Shunter Remote quickly. The remote can be used in both VR and non-VR, using your hands in the former and keyboard controls in the latter. With the Shunter Remote also comes the Utility Belt. This one-size-fits-all belt was created originally to hold the remote in VR, but has the ability to hold up to three items on you at all times. Many combination of items are possible, such as your map, Shunter Remote, and Switch Remote, as well as your pen and clipboard to mark when and where you've thrown your train off the tracks. We're sure you'll find many different ways to use it. Item Dumpsters are here. These dumpsters, located near each and every lost and found shed, permanently deletes items that are thrown into them. It'll also cancel and delete jobs that are tossed in, but if you accidentally throw in something that you paid good hard cash for, it'll only be deleted if you leave it there. Feel free to dumpster dive for your wallet when you accidentally toss it out with whatever else was on your belt. Finally, we get to the new customizable key bindings. Currently, these only exist as an INI file in your save game data folder, and also as console commands in game. The keybindings.ini file exists in your derail valley data slash save game data folder. To edit a key binding, you can either open that INI file in a text editor, such as Notepad, or you can use the console command bind, followed by what action you're binding and what key or keys you're binding it to. As an example, typing bind space move capital F in forward space W will bind the W key to moving forward. A bit involved, but for now, it's easy enough. Some bugs were fixed quite handily, and some commands and gameplay elements were also changed. For instance, you can now purchase all previous essential items in the shops now. Given that you can do this, the command player.giveessentialitems has been changed to player.givewallet, since you can't buy your own wallet. This won't give you more wallets though, so stop trying. Also fixed was the issue with teleporting off of locomotives. As fun as Flycam was, it definitely caused some issues. There is a ton more bug fixes and changes listed in the change logs, so please feel free to read up either on the Discord, the Steam discussion posts, or in the changelog.txt included in the main game folder. As for the community goals, as of writing, the community has passed 28,000 points. Just keep plugging away at it, and we'll be at 30,000 points in no time. That's all for this weekly update. Drive safe, and we'll see you in the valley.